Shallow Water Mutton Snappers, and new products by The Bally Hoop. Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Okay, guys, we're getting into it right away today. I've, I've got a lot to talk about, and AEW Wrestling's on tonight. <laughs> so, okay, so first I want to talk about the, ball- the new products that are going to be released, I think, mid-February by Ballyhoop. Now, these products are available for pre-order, so I highly suggest that you get your pre-orders in because these products are awesome, okay? And just when you think that Ballyhoop has revolutionized hoop nets, <laughs> I was just, when I seen this net, I was like, you got to be kidding me. So it's, it's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this new Ballyhoop Flex collapsible hoop net okay so the first thing i you know when i when i'm hoop netting bait and heavy current it's kind of tough ripping the the hoop through the water okay it can be a little challenging in heavy current and you miss a lot of baits and sometimes you only get a few shots at them if they're really spooky so bally hoop came out with this net okay it's it's a quarter of an inch mesh net the rod diameter is five millimeters, okay? Five millimeters. So it's really thin. And you could, like, rip this thing through the water with no problem in heavy tide. Man, it's, it's super nice. I was just like, you got to be kidding me. But what I was really, aside from that, which was, you know, I was, like, super impressed with that. I, and I'll, when I, I'll, sh- I'll make a video for you guys and I'll post it. The next time I go out and catch some ballyhoo, I'll be I'll probably be doing some patchery fishing this weekend because of the wind. So if I if I get the ballyhoo up within within range, I'll definitely be using this net. But what I really liked about it is how compact it is. Now the flex collapsible is just like their other bally hoops, but the flex basically folds into itself when it's stored. It it, it goes into a two foot round carrying case <laughs> i was just like you got to be kidding me so when bally hoop dropped off the net for me here at my house i was like what is that is that like a i was like it was so small that i didn't realize like i didn't know what the heck was going on because the last bally hoops were stored in long pouches and but when they showed up with this net i was like you got to be kidding me a two foot round case uh, the net's like four foot in diameter it's got a four foot net depth, a quarter inch mesh net. The rod diameter is five millimeters, which is badass. The collapsible diameter is 24 inches. And then they include a bag. Guys, it is awesome. I'm super impressed. And what I and not only is it going not only can you rip this thing through the water to get those ballyhoo quick and speedos, but you can store this thing. It's so compact that it fits right in my cabin. It doesn't get in the way. You don't have to worry about it ripping or anything like that. It's, I'm super impressed. So I highly recommend that you upgrade <laughs> with this net because it's going to change everything for you. Okay, so this net is available for pre-order on the Ballyhoops website. Okay, so before I move on to the next Ballyhoop product, I want to point out two key factors that make this net so appealing. The rod diameter on the old bally hoop is 9.5 millimeters. So like I, like I mentioned earlier, this diameter on the new, the new collapsible net is 5 millimeters. So this thing is thinner, <laughs> and it, it lets you go through that water quicker. And that collapsible diameter is 2 feet. So now let's talk about the chummy hoop. <laughs> this one is my favorite, okay, because chum bags are part of my life, okay? I do a lot of refishing and a lot of chumming, okay? I've been trying chum bags for years, and I've been using the same type of chum bag for years, and this chum bag that I use is just a standard one down here that you that the that the that a local guy makes. I don't know who makes it, but I just buy it at the gas station at you know at the gas station or at um or at the yellow bait house. It's a big you guys oh I don't even have to talk about it. You guys have seen it. If you haven't seen it, you can see it on my Instagram videos. But chum bags drive me crazy. It's my biggest pet peeve 
and because they just suck. They stink. At the end of the day, it's a pain in the ass trying to find a place to put them. The, it leaves residual chum on the boat and oil. Um, the flies like them. You gotta put them at the. You have to hang them off your boat. I leave my boat in the water, so I've got to hang it off the boat, and then I have to rinse them, and then I have to run the boat to try to get the excess chum out of there. Excess chum sticks to the to the netting, and you don't get a really good chum flow through the through the nets at times. It just depends on the chum and guys. There's no, like, the science of making chum sucks. I mean, every block of chum is different. There is no, some blocks are great, some blocks are not. Even from the same brands, I don't care who, who it is, it's chum. It's fish guts and oils and stuff. So, and I use 25-pound blocks of chum, okay? And it sucks having to shake the bag because they get caught up on this, on the, um, the chum gets caught on the mesh rope, and it's just a, freaking pain in the ass but it's part of my life and chum bags are part of my life so just when and it's just it's just that one thing that annoys me and it's the chum bag that i use and it's the best one i could find and i've tried making chum bags myself and they suck i've tried using different meshes so i've tried using the old plastic crates and that sucks because those those break and tear and some guy will tell me, oh, I got it all figured out. And I go, no, you don't, brother. No, you don't. The commercial guys, they go through the same thing. They'll tell you. They have to order their mesh, and they have to build their own nets. So when I seen the chummy hoop on on one of the videos, I was like, wow, this thing is like, they really put a lot of thought into this. Now, <laughs> I was like, but without, but like anything else out there, there's always those flashy items that, okay, are they worth the hype? Now, I've fallen victim to that stuff in the past, so I was really, really reluctant, okay, about the chummy hoop. Now, what is the chummy hoop? Okay, so the chummy hoop is, the, is, a, is described as the next generation chum bag net. That's, it's a patent pending, by, and it's made by Ballyhoop. Now... It allows for collapsible, easy storage, and it has rubber netting. And, and it, it lets it practically clean itself while it shakes when it empties in the water. And the chum flow out of this plastic netting is, plastic rubber netting is, is badass. And it holds up to, the, it actually holds up to two 25-pound blocks of chum, and it floats by itself. It, it's, it's got custom-colored EVA floats. Um, it's collapsible storage, um, the rubber net, and the rubber net's super easy to clean. I was just like, okay, everything sounds all fine and dandy, but does it really work? Guys, it works bad. <laughs> it's awesome. I, I have to tell you what, I put, a, I put three blocks of 25-pound chum in the net, okay? That was like last Friday, and... At the end of the day, I pulled the chum out. The, I'm sorry, I pulled the chum bag out, and it was clean. There was no residual chum, no wasted chum. I didn't have to throw any chum out of the net to clean the bag. Everything was dissolved. So I have to tell you, I had the perfect amount of chum being distributed. And when I went over to shake the bag... It was no heavy shake. It was just basically lifted it up and down, and the flex of the rubber with the chum, uh, the 25-pound block, just everything just went out with ease without having to do that heavy shake crap that you're used to to try to get the, get the holes unplugged and all this stuff so the chum chunks will seep through. And it was just, for me, I chum a lot, okay? And when I seen this, and I seen that all my chum was actually being dissolved and no, none of it was wasted, and I was just like, you got to be kidding me. And then when I was ready to leave at the end of the day, I pulled the chum bag up. I looked at it, and there was no residual. Like I said, no residual chum attached to it, no wasted chum. I didn't have to dump the chum bag or drag the chum bag alongside the boat to clean it off. I just pulled the chum bag into the boat, 
I folded the chum bag and stored it in the front of the boat um, in a little storage compartment. Out of the way, not in the way, no, no smell. And it was, I can't tell you how clean it was. And when I got back to the dock, I just I just gave it a, a, a little rinse, and I didn't really even need to do that, to be honest with you. I just I just rinsed the salt water off of it just to keep the integrity of the rubber. Um, so that's what I would suggest. At the end of the day, you just you know rinse it off with your other gear just to, just to keep the salt off the off the bag, and just like you would do with your rods and the reels for maintenance and to protect the PVC and all that good stuff that it's made out of. So it's always good practice to take care of your nets and your and that kind of stuff. And this net really made me happy. Uh, it's hard to, you know, it's like the simple things with me. There's a lot of things that irritate me and when I'm out on the water, and, and the chum net is one of them. I know everybody's like that. Everybody has that one little pet peeve, and chum nets are mine. Just one of mine. <laughs> so it is what it is. But it, it, it was nice to see that pet peeve go away because this thing is perfect. Now, one thing about chumming is you have to have a constant flow of chum to keep big yellowtails happy in the chum slick. If your chum stick starts getting, um, what's the word for it? I call it messed up meaning that if you're not getting that proper flow, it confuses the fish and they start to, and then they'll either move further back into the chum slick or, you know, they just kind of start to scatter. So you really need a good flow, a constant flow to keep yellowtails happy in the slick. Okay. So I really, from what I've seen so far, this chummy hoop is definitely going to achieve a much better slick than, uh, than, than the normal nets that are out there. So something to think about. If you're really going to go out there and do it right, you got to have the right materials, okay? you got to have the right tools to do the job and the right materials. And chum nets, like it or not, they're part of the right tools to do the job with. And like the old saying goes, there's always a better mousetrap. And the Chummy Hoop is a better mousetrap. And I thank Bally Hoop for putting in the time to create this because it's going to make my life so nice and we're going to catch so many more fish than what we're catching now. And we're catching a lot of fish when they're biting, but I think we can catch a lot more and a lot bigger, a lot more bigger fish with, with, a better, with better chum flow. And not to mention it's going to save me money because I'm not going to be burning through so much chum because it's wasted because of these crappy chum nets that are out there right now. So do yourself a favor, pre-order a chummy hoop because these things are going to go fast because the guys that know are going to buy them quick, okay? The guys that know they're going to buy them quick. So if you're planning on coming down here this summer doing some yellowtail fishing, you need to order a chummy hoop now. So... Pre, uh, they're available for pre-order on the chummyhoop.com and you can pre-order the bally hoop at the on the on bally hoop on the ballyhoop.com also they'll be available at the bally hoops booth at the Miami boat show this this year so the bally hoop is going to be at booth D337 at the Miami boat show and the Miami boat show is like I said it's February 13th through the 17th this year I believe Stop by, check it out. You can pre-order them online at the Chummy Hoop Doc. Okay, so as I went into shallow water mutton snapper fishing, I realized that before I knew it, I was like another forty-five minutes into the podcast. So it was the pod, This podcast would end up being almost like an hour and a half to two hours long. Okay, so I mentioned that I was going to talk about shallow water mutton snappers on this podcast earlier, but as I got into the podcast, I realized that the podcast was like two hours long. It was extremely long, and I was like, okay, I've got to break this up. So I decided that I'm just going to break this up into two podcasts, and I'm going to finish talking about the uh, – I'm going to talk about shallow water mutton snappers in the next podcast. So I mentioned it earlier on at the beginning, so you're just going to have to wait because the podcast would have been two hours, way too long. So 
It'll be a good podcast with a lot of details for the guys that are curious about it, as I do have unconventional methods for targeting them on the Patrice. So I'll share, like I said, I just didn't have enough time to fit it in this podcast because it's way too long. So I'm going to break it up and I'll release it here in a few days for you guys. More than likely, it'll be next week because my schedule's full and I've got some other projects working on. I started my second round of consulting and I've got room for one more student. So I've decided to take on three students for my six-week course, and I've got I filled two spots. So I'm starting up, and I have room for one more for the six-week program. And you can contact me on about that. That does include the six-week program. Does include one. Now the six-week program does include one on the water seminar with me aboard Good Karma. So. And then it's a once a week consultation, and we it's endless amounts of time, and it's built over six weeks, meaning that uh, it, it's flexible around your schedule. So it's an open ended um, forum where you ask me anything, and then I kind of structure it around what you want to learn as well. And then I will share certain GPS locations and tracks with my clients only. And there is confidentiality agreements as far as non-competes and, and so forth that go along with my course. So because you're getting a, a, an education and you are, I'm jump-starting you, so I'm saving you thousands of dollars in time. If you're buying a new boat, there's a, a big learning curve out there. So, and that's just what the course is for. I really do enjoy educating people. I really do enjoy it. So if you're interested in the, in the course, then how it works is we, I have to, first, we, you have to be a good fit for me because we're going to be spending a lot of time together. And if you're not a good fit, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. But I've got to wrap it up today, guys. So stay tuned for the Shallow Water Mutton Fishing podcast coming up. And that's all I got. Please make sure you check out my website. I put up, posted up a new fishing report, www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. Follow me on Instagram at goodkarmasportfishing underscore FL underscore keys to keep up with what I'm catching out there. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, and sign up for my newsletter. I'd re really appreciate it. You can do that through my website. That's all I got. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.